Good evening, welcome to Evening Prayer on Saturday the 20th of June. My name is the Reverend Paul Lavender. I'm the Senior Pastor of Mount Hazen Baptist Church here in Northampton. Thank you for joining me. Trust you've had a good day. It's been a mixed day of weather here in Northampton, but I was able to enjoy a walk this morning, which was lovely. Trust you've been able to enjoy the day too. And now as the day draws to its close, let's dedicate ourselves and bring the day before the Lord in prayer. So let's bow our heads, shall we? as we gather and remember the presence of the Lord with us now. Psalm 111 Praise the Lord. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart, in the company of the upright, in the congregation. Great are the works of the Lord, studied by all who delight in them. Full of honour and majesty is his work, and his righteousness endures for ever. He has gained renown by his wonderful deeds. The Lord is gracious and merciful. He provides food for those who fear him. He is ever mindful of his covenant. He has shown his people the power of his works in giving them the heritage of the nations. The works of his hands are faithful and just. All his precepts are trustworthy. They are established for ever and ever to be performed with faithfulness and uprightness. He sent redemption to his people. He has commanded his covenant for ever. Holy and awesome is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All who practice it have good understanding. His praise endures for ever. Thanks be to God for his word. Let us pray. Bless us, Father of all creation, as we rest from our work. Help us to share your delight in the world you have made and in the life you have given us. May your spirit refresh us, renew our health and strength, and make us more eager to serve you in body and soul. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us each now in quiet confess our sins before God, asking him to forgive what we have been and to shape what we can be by his grace. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God forgive us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins. Give us time for amendment of life and bring us the grace and the comfort of the Holy Spirit. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. We're reading in our evening prayer through the early part of the book of Genesis. The moment we're reading through the story of Noah and this evening we arrive in chapter 7, beginning to read at the first verse. Then the Lord said to Noah, go into the ark, you and all your household, for I have seen that you alone are righteous before me in this generation. Take with you seven pairs of all clean animals, the male and its mate, and a pair of the animals that are not clean, the male and its mate, and seven pairs of the birds of the air also, male and female, to keep their kind alive on the face of all the earth. For in seven days I will send rain on the earth for forty days and forty nights, and every living thing that I have made I will blot out from the face of the ground. And Noah did all that the Lord had commanded him. Noah was six hundred years old when the floods of waters came on the earth. And Noah with his sons and his wife and his sons' wives went into the ark to escape the waters of the flood. Of clean animals and of animals that are not clean and of birds and of everything that creeps on the ground, two and two, male and female, went into the ark with Noah as God had commanded Noah. And after seven days the waters of the flood came on the earth. In the 600th year of Noah's life, in the second month, on the 17th day of the month, 
On that day all the fountains of the great deep burst forth, and the windows of heavens were opened. The rain fell on the earth forty days and forty nights. On that very same day Noah with his sons, Shem and Ham and Japheth, and Noah's wife and the three wives of his sons entered the ark, they and every wild animal of every kind, and all domestic animals of every kind, and all creeping thing that creeps on the earth, and every bird of every kind, every bird, every winged creature. They went into the ark with Noah, two and two of all flesh, in which there was the breath of life. And those that entered, male and female of all flesh, went in as God had commanded him, and the Lord shut him in. The flood continued forty days on the earth, and the waters increased and bore up the ark, and it rose high above the earth. The waters swelled and increased greatly on the earth, and the ark floated on the face of the waters. The waters swelled so mightily on the earth that all the high mountains under the whole heaven were covered. The waters swelled above the mountains, covering them fifteen cubits deep, and all flesh died that moved on the earth, birds, domestic animals, wild animals, all swarming creatures that swarm on the earth, and all human beings. Everything on dry land in whose nostrils was the breath of life died. He blotted out every living thing that was on the face of the ground, human beings and animals and creeping things and birds of the air. They were blotted out from the earth. Only Noah was left, and those that were with him in the ark, and the waters swelled on the earth for 150 days. Thanks be to God for his word. So what is the writer here of, of this account? What are we reading here? What's the writer trying to convey to us in this story, in this account of the Great Flood? Well, we can try and read this story with 21st century eyes, but that will do us no good. And I don't intend to give you a theological analysis of this or to explain necessarily before to you this evening why we need to try and understand uh, what the people to whom this was originally written, um, what was trying to be conveyed. Um, but it certainly has power for us today. And I think there are a few things I would want to say. The first thing to say is this, that Noah obeyed. Verse six, 5 says, And Noah did all that the Lord had commanded him. And we read in verse uh, 20, um, that um, the waters swelled up above the mountains, covering them 15 cubits deep. And Noah was safe because, first of all, he obeyed God. He did what God asked him to do. And so through the account of the story of Noah, we keep coming back to this. God speaks and Noah obeys. A good lesson for us to learn. The second thing to say is that the writers here were obviously trying to convey this most important fact, is that God is not remote from his creation. They would never have had that same sense of a... Uh, sacred secular uh, divide. Um, the gods of the nations around um, here and in this in this culture, everybody believed that the gods were not distant. The Romans believed that later, we come to find out. But here at this time, gods were involved intimately. There was no sense of them stepping back. And so the god, and god here in in causing this flood, this was a sign of God being concerned and involved in his creation and concerned about his people. And it's important for us to know today that God is concerned about us and wants to be involved in our lives too. And the third thing to say is this, that the ark did, because more, we know there's more in the story to come, but at this point, the ark did what it was tended to do. God provided protection for his people. God provided salvation for his people. The ark becomes a symbol um, later on. It, is, it has been interpreted as such down through the centuries as well for Christians as a symbol of the protection that God offers within the context of the salvation brought to us through Jesus Christ. And so all who are in danger can run to him and find that he is 
uh, a safe place to hide. And the ark here provides safety for Noah and his family. And if we will let him, God will provide spiritual safety for us too. And also we can pray that in whatever situation we find ourselves, whether we're in physical danger, emotional danger, as well as spiritual danger, we have a God who, because he's concerned about us and involved in our world, is only too willing to get involved in our lives if we'll let him. Thanks be to God. Let's confess our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. and He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Firstly, this evening, we pray for the peace of the world. Almighty God, from whom all thoughts of truth and peace proceed, kindle, we pray, in all our hearts the true love of peace and guide with your pure and peaceable wisdom those who take counsel for the nations of the earth, that in tranquillity your kingdom may go forward till the earth is filled with the knowledge of your love through Jesus Christ our Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, good shepherd of the sheep, who came to seek out the lost and to gather them into your fold, have compassion on those who have wandered away from you. Feed those who are hungry, make the weary lie down in green pastures, bind up the broken in heart and strengthen the weak, so that we may rely on your care, be comforted by your love, and stand firm under your guidance to the end of our lives for the sake of your name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we bring to the Lord now ourselves and those we know personally in a moment of quiet prayer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We share together in saying the Lord's Prayer in whatever language or form is common to us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. May God, the Lord, bless us and make us pure and holy in his sight. May the riches of his glory abound in us. May he instruct us with the word of truth, inform us with the gospel of salvation and enrich us with his love and the blessing of God Almighty. The Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you and with those whom you love and with God's people everywhere this night and forevermore. Amen. Thank you for joining me for prayer this evening. God bless you. I trust that you sleep well and that you're well rested for tomorrow. Just a reminder, it's Father's Day tomorrow, so as a father, I hope you've um, taken note of this, and those of you who are going to be remembering it. And uh, I look forward to joining with you tomorrow morning at 9am for morning prayer. We have 
a kids church at 9.30 and morning worship at 10.30. You're welcome to join us for any or all of those. And again, tomorrow night at 9pm for evening prayer. But until then, God bless and good night.